Good day. Today I will be presenting thyroid storm with a focus on hyperthyroidism. Thyroid hormone affects all organ systems and is responsible for increasing metabolic rate, heart rate, and ventricle contractility, as well as muscle and central nervous system excitability. Two major types of thyroid hormones are thyroxine and thyroidine. Thyroxine is the major form of thyroid hormone. The ratio of thyroxine to triiodothyronine released in the blood is 20 to 1. Peripherally, thyroxine is converted to the active triiodothyronine, which is 3 to 4 times more potent than thyroxine. Hyperthyroidism refers to excess circulating hormone resulting only from thyroid gland hyperfunction, whereas thyrotoxicosis refers to excess circulating thyroid hormone originating from any cause, including thyroid hormone overdose. Thyroid storm is the extreme manifestation of thyrotoxicosis. This is an acute, severe, life-threatening, hypermetabolic state of thyrotoxicosis caused either by excessive release of thyroid hormones, causing adrenergic hyperactivity, or altered peripheral response to thyroid hormone following the presence of one or more precipitants. The mortality of thyroid storm without treatment is between 80 and 100 percent, and with treatment, it is between 15 and 50 percent. Primary hyperthyroidism is caused by the excess production of thyroid hormones from the thyroid glands. Secondary hyperthyroidism is caused by the excess production of thyroid-releasing hormones or thyroid-stimulating hormones in the hypothalamus and pituitary, respectively. In the case of thyroid storm, the most common underlying cause of hyperthyroidism is Graves' disease. It is caused by the thyrotropin receptor antibodies that stimulate excess and uncontrolled thyroidal synthesis and secretion of thyroid hormones. It occurs most frequently in young women. The pathophysiologic mechanisms underlying the shift from uncomplicated thyrotoxicosis to thyroid storm are not entirely clear. However, they involve adrenergic hyperactivity either by increased release of thyroid hormones with or without increased in synthesis or increased receptor sensitivity. Many of the signs and symptoms are related to adrenergic hyperactivity. Patients with thyroid storm reportedly have relatively higher levels of free thyroid hormones as opposed to those with uncomplicated thyrotoxicosis. The total thyroid hormone level may or may not be increased in these patients. When there is excess of thyroid hormones, circulating thyroxine and thyroidothyronine are taken into the cytoplasm of cells. Thyroxine is converted to its active form, triiodothyronine. Within the cytoplasm, the triiodothyronine then exerts its effect by passing into the nucleus and binding to thyroid hormone receptors or thyroid hormone responsive elements to induce gene activation and transcription. The receptors receiving the hormone will stimulate changes specific to the tissue. Causes of hyperthyroidism, primary and secondary, are as follows. For primary hyperthyroidism, you have Graves' disease, which is the most common of all hyperthyroidism etiologies. It is associated with diffuse goiter, ophthalmopathy, and local dermopathy. Toxic multinodular goiter is the second most common cause. And toxic nodular, or an adenoma, goiter is an enlarged thyroid gland that contains a small rounded mass or masses called nodules with overproduction of thyroid hormone. Thyroiditis is inflammation of the thyroid gland, and Hashimoto's thyroiditis has the gland initially being overactive in a hyperthyroidism state, but this is usually followed by a state of hypothyroidism. There is also subacute painful thyroiditis, also known as the Curvain's thyroiditis. There is also subacute painless thyroiditis and radiation thyroiditis. Secondary hyperthyroidism which is due to causes in the pituitary or the hypothalamus, include thyrotropin-secreting pituitary adenoma. The thyroid gland is stimulated to produce hormones. In the pituitary gland, thyroid hormones exert negative regulation on the transcription of the genes for the subunit and the common subunit of thyroid-stimulating hormone, resulting in thyroid-stimulating hormone suppression. During thyroid storm, Precipitants such as infection, stress, 
Myocardial infarction or trauma will multiply the effect of thyroid hormones by freeing thyroid hormones from their binding sites or increasing receptor sensitivity. The precipitance of thyroid storm will be discussed later. In some patients undergoing radioactive iodine therapy for hyperthyroidism, thyroid storm may ironically occur following treatment due to withdrawal of antithyroid drugs, release of thyroid hormones from damaged thyroid follicles, or the effect of radioactive iodine itself. The patient may only complain of constitutional symptoms such as generalized weakness and fatigue, heat intolerance, diaphoresis, fever, voracious appetite but poor weight gain, anxiety, emotional lability, palpitations, diarrhea, and hair loss are common historical features. If there is a history of hyperthyroidism, we ask about treatment and compliance with medication. In general physical examination, patients often appear toxic and agitated. So other causes of hyperthyroidism before we proceed with the physical examination include non-thyroidal disease, drug-induced as well. So non-thyroidal disease include ectopic thyroid tissue such as stroma ovari or a teratoma. It's a rare form of mature teratoma that contains mostly thyroid tissue. Metastatic thyroid cancer stimulates production of thyroid hormones, and human chorionic gonadotropin is secreted by a hydatidiform mole. Drug-induced causes of hyperthyroidism include iodine. There is iodine-induced thyrotoxicosis, which is also called jod based disease, and after treatment of endemic goiter patients with iodine or stimulation of thyroid hormones from use of iodine-containing agents such as radiographic contrast agents, this may occur. Amiodarone contains iodine, which may cause either thyrotoxicosis or hypothyroidism. Alpha interferon and interleukin-2 may also cause hyperthyroidism because during treatment for other diseases such as viral hepatitis and human immunodeficiency virus, these two may also cause hyperthyroidism. Thyrotoxicosis factitia is Munchausen-like, so thyroid hormone is taken by patient to fake illness. Ingestion of meat containing beef thyroid tissue can also cause hyperthyroidism since cow thyroid tissue contains thyroid hormones. And excessive thyroid hormone ingestion. Precipitants of thyroid storm include systemic insults such as infection, trauma, and general surgery, endocrine insults such as diabetic ketoacidosis and hyperosmolar coma, drug or hormone related such as withdrawal of antithyroid medication, iodine administration, thyroid gland palpation, or ingestion of thyroid hormone. Cardiovascular insult may also precipitate thyroid storm, such as myocardial infarction, cerebrovascular accidents, and pulmonary embolism. Obstetrics related include parturition and eclampsia, and radioactive iodine therapy is also a precipitant of thyroid storm. Signs and symptoms of thyrotoxicosis include constitutional symptoms such as lethargy, weakness, or heat intolerance with signs of diaphoresis, fever, and weight loss. Neuropsychiatric symptoms and signs include emotional lability, anxiety, confusion, coma, and psychosis with fine tremors, muscle wasting, hyperreflexia, and periodic paralysis as signs. Ophthalmologic symptoms and signs include diplopia, eye irritation, lid lag, dry eyes, exophthalmos, ophthalmoplegia, and conjunctival infection. For endocrine, such as in the thyroid gland, you can have neck fullness, tenderness, thyroid enlargement, and thyroid brewery. Cardiorespiratory manifestations include dyspnea, palpitations, chest pain, widened pulse pressure, systolic hypertension, sinus tachycardia, atrial fibrillation or flutter, and a high output heart rate. Your gastrointestinal presentations include diarrhea, yellowish sclera, hyperactive bowel sounds, and jaundice. In the reproductive system, oligomenorrhea may occur with a decrease in libido, with gynecomastia and teleangiectasia. Gynecologic in particular would include menorrhagia, irregularity, and sparse pubic hair. Hematologic includes pale skin, anemia, and leukocytosis. And dermatologic includes hair loss, pretibial myxedema, warm, moist skin, palmar erythema, and onycholysis. Pretibial myxedema may be present in 5% of patients with Graves' disease.
As for thyroid storm, additional signs and symptoms are as follows. There could be thermoregulatory fever, agitation, extreme lethargy, delirium, psychosis, seizures, coma, tachycardia, pedal edema, bibasal crepitations, pulmonary edema, atrial fibrillation, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, and jaundice. Fever is often present in thyroid storm and may be quite high. It may herald the onset of thyrotoxic crisis in previously uncomplicated disease. Palpitations, tachycardia, and dyspnea are common. A pleuropericardial rub may be heard. The direct inotropic and chronotropic effects of thyroid hormone on the heart cause increased blood volume, increased contractility, and increased cardiac output. Enhanced contractility produces elevations in systolic blood pressure and pulse pressure, leading to a dichrotic or water hammer pulse. Atrial fibrillation occurs in 10-35% to of thyrotoxicosis cases. The severity of exophthalmos does not necessarily parallel the magnitude of thyroid dysfunction but reflects the responsible autoimmune process. Not all hyperthyroidism patients present with goiter. A goiter is not present with exogenous administration of thyroid hormone and apathetic thyrotoxicosis. Likewise, the presence of a goiter does not necessarily confirm the diagnosis of thyrotoxicosis. Thyroid gland tenderness can be found in inflammatory conditions such as subacute thyroiditis. Thyroid storm is a clinical diagnosis for patients with pre-existing hyperthyroidism. In determining whether or not a patient has thyroid storm, the main system to concentrate on are the thermoregulatory system, manifesting with a rise in temperature, the cardiovascular system, ranging from tachycardia to atrial fibrillation and congestive cardiac failure, the central nervous system, ranging from being agitated to full-on seizures, and the gastrointestinal hepatic system, ranging from nausea to vomiting and jaundice. A scoring system for thyroid storm as compared with severe thyrotoxicosis is the Burke and Wartofsky's Diagnostic Parameters and Scoring Points for Thyroid Storm. Diagnostic parameters include thermoregulatory function with a temperature of 37.2 to 37.7 given 5 points, 37.7 to 38.3 10 points, 38.3 to 38.8 15 points, 38.9 to 39.4 at 20 points, 39.4 to 39.9 at 25 points, and more than 40 at 30 points. CNS effects, if they are absent, do not add any point. If the patient is mildly agitated, it adds 10 points. If the patient has delirium, psychosis, or extreme lethargy, that's 20 points. And for patients with seizures and coma, that adds 30 points. For absent gastrohepatic dysfunction, that doesn't add any points. Moderate dysfunction such as diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, and abdominal pain adds 10 points. And severe, which includes unexplained jaundice, is 20 points. For cardiovascular dysfunction, for tachycardia, if it's between 90 to 109, it adds 5 points. If it's 110 to 119, it adds 10 points. If between 120 and 129, 15 points. And if greater than 140, 25 points. For congestive heart failure, if it's absent, no points are added. If there's mild pedal edema, 5 points are added. If there's moderate manifestations of congestive heart failure, such as bivascular rails, that's 10 points. And for severe congestive heart failure, manifesting with pulmonary edema, add 15 points. If atrial fibrillation is present, add 10 points. If the score is greater than or equal to 45, it's highly suggestive of thyroid storm. If it's between 25 and 44, it is suggestive of impending storm, and if it is less than 25, it's unlikely to represent thyroid storm. So the differential diagnosis of thyroid storm include infection and sepsis, sympathomimetic ingestion such as cocaine, amphetamine, and ketamine drug use, heat exhaustion, heat stroke, delirium tremens, malignant hyperthermia, malignant neuroleptic syndrome, hypothalamic stroke, Theochromocytoma, medication withdrawal such as with cocaine and opioids, psychosis, and organophosphate poisoning. In primary hyperthyroidism, the thyroid stimulating hormone level is low as a result of the negative feedback mechanism toward a high thyroid hormone level. 
Nevertheless, a low thyroid stimulating hormone level by itself is not diagnostic as serum thyroid stimulating hormone may be reduced as a result of chronic liver or renal disease or the effect of certain drugs such as glucocorticoids which reduce thyroid stimulating hormone secretion. In secondary hyperthyroidism, thyroid stimulating hormone is increased because of increased production in the pituitary. A low thyroid stimulating hormone with an elevated free thyroxine confirms primary hyperthyroidism. A high thyroid stimulating hormone with high free thyroxine denotes secondary causes of hyperthyroidism. On the other hand, a low thyroid stimulating hormone with a normal free thyroxine but elevated free triiodothyronine is also diagnostic of triiodothyronine thyrotoxicosis. Triiodothyronine toxicosis occurs in less than 5% of patients who have thyrotoxicosis in North America. Total thyroid hormone levels are not necessarily acutely elevated when the transition from uncomplicated thyrotoxicosis to thyroid storm occurs. Triiodothyronine resin uptake estimates free thyroxine levels by measuring unoccupied thyroxine binding globulin sites and is also used to account for changes in binding protein concentration. A higher triiodothyronine resin uptake value means less thyroxine binding globulin is available, implying the presence of hyperthyroidism. Total serum thyroxine and triiodothyronine, bound and unbound, are increased in thyrotoxicosis. 80% of circulating triiodothyronine is derived from monodiiodination of thyroxine in peripheral tissues, whereas 20% emanates from direct thyroidal secretion. Both thyroxine and triiodothyronine are then bound to proteins in the form of thyroxine binding globulin, transthyrotin, and albumin. Only a small fraction of the hormones are free and unbound. Laboratory measurement of total triiodothyronine and total thyroxine measures mainly protein-bound hormone concentrations. In thyroid storm, total thyroid hormone level may or may not be increased. Results may also be affected by conditions that affect protein binding. With the improved assays for free thyroxine and free triiodothyronine, there is now little indication to measure total triiodothyronine and total thyroxine. Thyroid-stimulating antibodies are detected in Graves' disease. Thyroid antibody titers to thyroid peroxidase or thyroglobulin will help determine the diagnosis. Ancillary tests include CBC, electrolytes, glucose, and renal and liver function tests in order to identify comorbidities, but we start treatment upon suspicion of the diagnosis. In thyroid storm, CBC typically shows leukocytosis with a shift to the left. Hyperglycemia tends to occur because of a catecholamine-induced inhibition of insulin release and increased glycogenolysis and rapid intestinal absorption of glucose. Mild hypercalcemia and elevated alkaline phosphatase can occur because of hemoconcentration and enhanced thyroid hormone-stimulated bone resorption. Thyrotoxicosis also induces liver enzyme metabolism, causing raised liver enzymes. A high serum cortisol value is an expected finding in thyrotoxic individuals. This should be the normal reaction of an adrenal gland to a body under stress. The finding of an abnormally low cortisol level in a patient with Graves' disease should raise suspicion of coincidental adrenal insufficiency. Chest radiograph can be done to rule out infection as a precipitant for thyroid storm. A thyroid sonogram with Doppler flow can be done to assess thyroid gland size, vascularity, and the presence of nodules. Typically, a thyroid gland secreting excessive hormones would be enlarged. On the other hand, in the setting of subacute postpartum thyroiditis, silent thyroiditis, or exogenous causes of hyperthyroidism, the thyroid gland is not expected to be enlarged. Nuclear medicine imaging with iodine-131 would reveal a greatly increased uptake of radioiodine as early as 1 or 2 hours after administration of the agent. CD of the brain may be necessary to exclude neurologic conditions if the diagnosis is uncertain as CNS abnormalities causing altered mental status may precipitate thyroid storm. EKG findings in thyrotoxicosis most commonly include sinus tachycardia and atrial fibrillation. Sinus tachycardia occurs in approximately 40% of cases, while atrial fibrillation occurs in 10 to 35% of thyrotoxicosis patients, more commonly in patients older than 60 years old with underlying structural heart disease. Premature ventricular contractions and heart blocks may also be present. Atrial premature contractions and atrial flutter may also occur.
The order of therapy in treating thyroid storm is very important with regard to the use of thionamide and iodine therapy. Inhibition of thyroid gland synthesis of new thyroid hormone with the thionamide should be initiated before iodine therapy to prevent the stimulation of new thyroid hormone synthesis that can occur if iodine is given too soon. Treatment aims are as follows. Supportive care, inhibition of new hormone synthesis, inhibition of thyroid hormone release, peripheral beta-adrenergic receptor blockade, and preventing peripheral conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine. Treatment recommendations are as follows. For supportive care, we give oxygen and cardiac monitoring. For fever, we give external cooling, paracetamol every four to six hours, and aspirin is contraindicated because it may increase free thyroid hormone. For dehydration, we give intravenous fluids, especially isotonic saline with 5% dextrose if needed to replace glycogen depletion if blood sugar is low. For nutrition, we give glucose, multivitamins, thiamine, and including folate can be considered since it may be deficient secondary to hypermetabolism. Cardiac decompensation such as atrial fibrillation and congestive heart failure may be managed through rate control and inotropic agents. Diuretics and sympatholytics may be as required. We inhibit new thyroid hormone synthesis with thionamide such as methimazole 40 mg given per orem as loading dose and followed by 25 mg every 4 hours. The total daily dose should be 120 mg per day. If given per rectum, 40 mg should be crushed in aqueous solution. We avoid methimazole for pregnant women in the first trimester since it can cause teratogenic effects. It can only be used in the second and third trimester of pregnancy. We can also use PTU which can be used for pregnant women in the first trimester. You give a loading dose of 600 to 1,000 mg per orem followed by 200 to 250 mg every 4 hours. The total daily dose should be 1,200 to 1,500 mg per day. The drug can be given via nasogastric tube or per rectum. PTU also blocks peripheral conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine. It has a rare side effect toward liver function, so methimazole is generally preferred as a first-line treatment unless contraindicated. For inhibition of thyroid hormone release, at least one hour after inhibition of new thyroid hormone synthesis with thionamides, we give Lugol solution at 8 to 10 drops per orem every 6 to 8 hours, or potassium iodide 5 drops every 6 hours per orem, or IV iopanoic acid 1 gram every 8 hour for the first 24 hours, then 50 milligrams twice a day, or ipodate 0.5 to 3 grams per day, per orem, especially useful with thyroiditis or thyroid hormone overdose, or lithium carbonate if allergic to iodine or agranulocytosis occurs with thionamides, 300 mg per orem every 6 hours for 1,200 mg per day and subsequently to maintain serum lithium at 1 mech per liter. Beta adrenergic receptor blockade can be given through propranolol IV in slow 1 to 2 mg boluses, which may be repeated every 10 to 15 minutes until the desired effect is achieved. For a less toxic patient, the per RM dose of 20 to 120 mg per dose or 160 to 320 mg per dose in divided doses, which is contraindicated in bronchospastic disease and congestive heart failure or esmolol 500 micrograms per kilogram IV bolus, then 50 to 200 micrograms per kilogram per minute as maintenance, or reserpine at 2.5 to 5 milligrams intramuscularly every 4 to 6 hours, preceded by 1 milligram test dose while monitoring blood pressure. We use if beta blockers are contraindicated but avoid in congestive heart failure or hypotension and cardiac shock. Or you could also give guanitidine at 30 to 40 milligrams per orem every 6 hours, which we can also use if beta blockers are contraindicated but have the same contraindications as reserpine. We also prevent peripheral conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine with hydrocortisone 100 milligrams intravenously initially, then 100 milligrams three times per day until stable. We also use it for adrenal replacement due to hypermetabolism or dexamethasone 2 mg intravenously every 6 hours. We also treat the precipitating event and search for all triggers of thyroid storm and treat them accordingly, regardless of whether it's infection, myocardial infarction, diabetic ketoacidosis, etc. 
And the definitive therapy is radioactive iodine ablation therapy or surgery, which may be necessary depending on the patient. So when it comes to supportive care, fluid losses could result from the combination of fever, diaphoresis, vomiting, and diarrhea. We check if blood glucose and if blood sugar is relatively low, IV fluids with dextrose, Isotonic saline with 5 or 10% dextrose may be given to replenish glycogen stores. Cholestyramine is used to inhibit thyroid hormone reabsorption. Thyroid hormone is metabolized mainly in the liver where it is conjugated to gluconorides and sulfates. These conjugation products are then excreted in the bile. Free hormones are released in the intestine and finally reabsorbed, completing the enterohepatic circulation of thyroid hormone. In states of thyrotoxicosis, there is increased enterohepatic circulation of thyroid hormone. Cholestyramine is an anion exchange resin that decreases absorption of thyroid hormone from the enterohepatic circulation. Cholestyramine in combination with metimazole or propyl thiouracil causes a more rapid decline in thyroid hormone levels than standard therapy with thionamides alone. Methimazole has a longer half-life than propyl thiouracil, and thionamides in general inhibit synthesis of thyroid hormones by preventing organification and trapping of iodide to iodine and by inhibiting coupling of iodothyrosines. It presents in free form in the serum, that's methimazole, whereas 80-90% to of propyl thiouracil is bound to albumin. When it comes to using iodine to inhibit hormone release, thionamide therapy must be instituted first and these drugs are only given at least one hour later. Iodine therapy blocks the release of pre-stored hormone and decreases iodide transport and oxidation in follicular cells. Nevertheless, iodine-containing solutions should not be given to patients with iodine overload or iodine-induced hyperthyroidism or those with amiodarone-induced thyrotoxicosis. Lithium or potassium perchlorate may be used instead. The peripheral conversion of thyroxine to triiodothyronine, which is responsible for 85% of triiodothyronine present in the circulation, is blocked by propyl thiouracil and propranolol. This effect is not quantitatively significant. Therefore, glucocorticoids such as hydrocortisone or dexamethasone are essential in treatment. Glucocorticoid use in thyroid storm also improves survival rates. In patients with severe thyrotoxicosis, especially in conjunction with hypotension, treatment with glucocorticoids is a standard practice because of the possibility of relative adrenal insufficiency. Propranolol can be given IV in slow 1 to 2 mg boluses, which may be repeated every 10 to 15 minutes until the desired effect is achieved. Contraindications to peripheral blockade are the same as those for other medical conditions. So as mentioned earlier, we exercise caution in patients with congestive cardiac failure and thyrotoxic cardiomyopathy. Complicated patients with both atachy dysrhythmia and congestive heart failure can be managed first with rate control and an inotropic agent. So alternative drugs for inhibition of new hormone synthesis or release include potassium perchlorate, which blocks thyroid uptake of iodine and thus interferes with the production of new hormones. The perchlorate anion is a competitive inhibitor of iodide transport. Recommended dose is 0.5 gram of potassium perchlorate per day. It is used in amiodarone-induced thyrotoxicosis for which iodine replacement is contraindicated. However, it has side effects of aplastic anemia and nephrotic syndrome. In patients who have contraindications to propyl thiouracil and methimazole, such as a prior severe reaction, direct removal of thyroid hormone has been described through plasmapheresis, charcoal hemoperfusion, resin hemoperfusion, and plasma exchange for rapidly reducing thyroid hormone levels in thyroid storm. So when we prepare thyrotoxic patients for emergency surgery, in the event that the patient has thyrotoxicosis background and requires emergent surgery, drug supplementation includes beta-adrenergic blockades, propranolol at 40 to 80 milligrams per RM three to four times a day, or esmolol 50 to 100 micrograms per kilogram per minute. When the patient is done with their surgery, we shift esmolol to per orem propranolol. For thionamides, propyl thiouracil is given 200 mg per orem every 4 hours and methimazole is given 20 mg per orem every 4 hours. 
You can also give an oral cholecystographic agent such as iupanoic acid such as 500 mg per orm twice a day and we have to stop immediately after surgery for propylthiouracil, methimazole, and iupanoic acid. Especially for propylthiouracil, we stop it immediately after near-total thyroidectomy and continue after non-thyroidal surgery. Same with methimazole, but iopanoic acid should be stopped immediately after surgery. Corticosteroids such as hydrocortisone can be given at 100 mg per orem or intravenously every 8 hours and taper over the first 72 hours, or dexamethasone 2 mg per orem or intravenously every 6 hours, or betamethasone 0.5 mg per orem every 6 hours intramuscularly or intravenously. Common adverse side effects from antithyroid drugs include fever, abnormal sense of taste, hepatotoxicity, arthralgias, and vascular manifestations, pruritus, urticaria, and bone marrow issues. So after surgery, the precipitating event should be determined and definitive therapy of tyrotoxicosis should be planned. And that's all. Thank you.